Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series here on BIM After Dark. Uh, my name is Jeff. If you haven't been following along, this is episode three. And uh, on our previous episode, we um, continued building our existing conditions model of our 1950s mid-century modern house. Um, we added windows and doors, and uh, we also um, tackled this crazy sloping ceiling um, thing. So uh, definitely check out the previous episode if you haven't seen it so far. Um, we're gonna jump in and continue modeling the existing condition, tweaking through some of the details of this house. Uh, before we jump in, I wanna remind you all that this series um, has been sponsored by RevitFamily.biz. Brenton Weiberg, who is the uh, creator of that company, uh, who creates all of the family um, bundles and packages, doors, windows, cabinets, and whatnot that he provides, uh, is offering 20% off to anyone using the offer code 2022REVITKID. You can see a, a link below and uh, head on over and support him. <laughs> So today we're going to be doing existing cabinets. And now I'm going to be doing something that uh, in almost 99.99999% of the cases I would tell Revit users not to do. And that is model in place components. Um, so what you'll see is throughout this, this series, um, I do have specific generic cabinets and line-based cabinet families and all kinds of parametric cabinets that I use. But when it comes to existing conditions, and you'll see when we're building these cabinets, um, and especially when I know that every single, this, this kitchen's gonna get gutted. Every single cabinet is gonna get removed. So really the only reason we are modeling these cabinets is for reference for maybe before and after renderings in, in, in multimedia or for the de demo drawings. Um, I like to produce usually axonometric views for demo drawings as well as floor plans, and it just makes sense to have it. What you'll see is these cabinets have a lot of angles and curves and just they're very strange. And to me, it's one of the rare instances where I would say it does not make sense to sit down and build parametric versions of what you see here. So I wanted to have that disclaimer because if you know me and you followed any of my content, you know that um, in place components are always frowned upon. <laughs> and this is one of the very rare occasions where it works. And I also think it's going to be kind of interesting for maybe some of you who don't use in place components or maybe have been and, 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 and are trying to sort of figure out when to use them. Um, and maybe even some of uh, those of you who are beginners at Revit and sort of learning the, the different tools of, of using um, system families like a wall, door, window um, versus maybe um, extrusions um, and, and massing sort of, sort of um, items. So uh, I'm hoping this is just sort of a learning lesson too and maybe some ways that you can um, use typical tools like extrusions and sweeps and voids to build shapes that you want. Um, so with that disclaimer put out there, um, we're going to jump into it. You're going to see some cool stuff um, as far as just how I'm using the scan on top of photos, on top of Revit to just really build out this kitchen. And remember, really the only reason the existing cabinets even exist in this model is for existing and demo drawings as well as potentially before and after renderings if I want to use reference and so on. So with that, let's jump right into Revit and, uh, and we'll walk through uh, the process here. So here's the kitchen. As you can see, I'm just kind of looking through the scan to get a sense of these cabinets. Um, it's it's not too bad, um, the scan view itself, um, to sort of see um, the, the cabinet profile. And here I go, making an in-place model component. And uh, I'm just gonna go around and, and make this as close as possible. Like I said, um, this isn't, um, this doesn't need to be super accurate. These are literally getting demoed uh, day one. Um, but, uh, but you can see what I am doing is I am going through and I'm gonna make them as close as possible using the scan that I have there. I'm just drawing some shapes. I'm gonna use TR on my keyboard to trim this together. Um, I'm, you can see my magenta lines, hopefully. Um, I'm just doing an extrusion. So for those of you that don't know, um, this is just a model in place extrusion. Um, I'm using the fillet arc to sort of curve the edges. You'll see all of these cabinets have, have curved edges as I jump into polycam. And, um, and I'll run through sort of what it looks like. So you can see they all have these Formica curved edges. Even the base cabinets have these curved end pieces and it's, it's 
fun. <laughs> um, and so uh, I'm just going to pull it around and make it um, as close as possible. You see, even here, I'm sort of fudging away from the scan, mainly because I, I, I just modeled it at two foot, um, two foot off of the wall. And then I'm offsetting um, the cabinet at two foot ten and a half. I'm going to give it a nice material, which I think I, I gave all of the cabinets an existing um, existing kitchen cabinet material. Um, and so for that, again, if I'm using it for renderings, I want to make sure I have a good material here. Um, I'm working a lot in, in 2D right now, but what you'll see um, is as I go throughout this process, similar to um, all the other um, um, videos, uh, having multiple views is extremely important. And now I'm just offsetting for the uh, inch and a half uh, overhang um, and uh, and getting ready to uh, set the extrusion end and start of this countertop. Um, so I just modeled the counter and the countertop, um, uh, as you can see there, and they're just extrusions. Um, and you can see now I'm, I'm, I'm lifting it up by four inches. I'm going to take the same sketch, copy it in place, um, edit the sketch, and then offset it in. So it looks like I'm going really fast, but really I'm just copying in place, um, offsetting um, um, offsetting the lines and then changing the start and end and sketch and this is sped up a little bit so um, I apologize if, if you're trying to follow along um, and, and it's difficult but like I said it's not super important um, the technique here other than um, you could see how I'm kind of using the scan using 3d using the floor plan I'll go to an elevation uh, view right here um, which again all the scans are on so notice how nice it is to have these scans there um, look out watch how fast I can model um, these um, wall cabinets. So I'm going to use my wall as my work plane. So I'm just setting work plane model in place. I'm going to sketch out um, these lines, and now I just I can just go through and I can quickly just sketch, sketch and follow the scan, and really just make this 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 quick extrusion. Um, um, and, and it looks just like the, the existing without having to go through a thousand different dimensions, sketches, pads, uh, you name it to get to this view. Um, now you can see. Um, um, I've got my wall, my wall cabinets in. Um, I can even go in 3D to, to verify um, the depth of them, um, or I can go through a section view, um, which you can see here. I have a a section which apparently was horizontal, and uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm going to try to make it match the match the angle, which again doesn't need to be exactly perfect because of the the sake of the scan. But now I'm just turning on a turning off the scan so it doesn't get in the way. I was I was grabbing a bunch of points there, and now I can sort of orient this thing so that it's somewhat uh, perpendicular. Again, truly perpendicular in this case doesn't really make a di big difference, but um, hopefully you can see the the scan is actually giving me the reference of how deep these things are. Um, obviously, uh, you know, I have a few overlapping scans in that view, but um, as, as you're working in the project, you get a little more used to um, what you can see there. Now I'm going to go through and just start building out some of the other cabinet walls. Um, so on the on the back side, I'm going to uh, go to the same view, uh, floor plan view. So here on the back side, I'm actually going to do something kind of interesting <laughs> because I have four, three sketches there. I'm just going to simply copy that uh, original in place mass, um, and I'm going to edit each of those sketches and, and clean it up really fast. And so the only reason I did that is there's there's three there's three of basically identical pieces there, right? There's the base, there's the cabinet, and then there's the top. Um, and just by quickly Copying it over um, and then and then modifying each of the sketches, um, I can quickly create my 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 uh, cabinet space without um, you know redrawing. Create new extrusion. Create new extrusion. Create new extrusion. Um, again, these are the kind of things that only really exist when you're using model in place, um, and usually are not the best workflows in, in Revit um, for a couple different reasons. Um, you know, work planes and, and all that good stuff in play. So now you can see I'm kind of looking around. Um, I've got some taller cabinets on the left-hand side. If I go to my elevation, again, what you'll notice with the greatest part about this scan is that um, any Revit view I jump into, I can see my context in place from my scan. As you can see, I didn't get a great scan of the refrigerator and tall cabinet area there. Um, I was I was messing around with Polycam and some of the some of the settings, even the higher resolution one, the the stainless steel on the on the refrigerator kind of mess with it but um, again the truth of the matter is in this case um, it didn't make a huge difference if it did I would have obviously taken more information for for that information for for those cabinets and so on um, so now I'm just going to continue through um, modeling out some of these pieces
here I go making the wall again the, the wall cabinets um, usually when I do something like this I may look at what I what I took from the scan if it says two foot seven and some crazy wacky change uh, I may just uh, round it to two foot seven um, and then I'm just copying that over again copying in place masses I know this is probably driving some people nuts uh, but again the whole point of this is just to get geometry there um, and um, to get the geometry there and and to basically demo it or use it for reference um, of course copying that wall actually wasn't the greatest idea because now i'm using a void um, to cut cut this um, when the truth is i could have used an extrusion um, to simply just draw that trying that that um, you know that shape with the triangle so i ended up actually deleting it and redrawing it because again i'm even though i'm using in place masses i am trying to keep things civil by uh, not having voids where i don't need voids So now I've got those three cabinets in place. Um, it's time to sort of tackle this little island. The island's a little wonky too. Again, like I said, it, it was just kind of a silly project to even bother um, trying to make parametric objects for, especially since they were getting demolished. You can see the island is kind of this weird uh, two cabinet with an opening. It's almost like a desk. It's kind, kind, of, kind of strange. Um, again, 1950s uh, fun stuff here. Uh, and so, so this is something that, again, you, you could actually approach a, a shape like this many different ways. Um, you know, you could do two, two extrusions with a void in the middle. Um, I'm, I think I'm doing the countertop right now. And, uh, and I'll you know, round the edges and make it clean. And then uh, the, the places, the, the objects below, you know, you could, you could do a couple different ways. Um, here I'm just trimming the edges using a, a fillet arc. And again, just sometimes what I'll do is I'll get it as close as I can, and and it's obviously that it's it's obvious that it's going to be you know inch and a quarter radius. Um, again, not that it really matters if the radius was that close for some, for something like these objects. And then I'm just sort of copying around and trimming trimming that um, trimming that around. Uh, what I did right there was actually a, a draw mirror. Um, so I selected the two arcs and I drew I drew a line in the middle and flipped it over for anyone who's 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 interested in some of the sketching techniques. Um, for for sketching um, extrusions um, here again I'm, I'm sort of copying down and making sure there's my there's my countertop now I really got to start looking at this thing and figuring out uh, <laughs> what 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 exactly it looks like and as you can see it's kind of goofy it's kind of like two file cabinets uh, in the middle of a kitchen um, and so uh, there's a couple ways you could approach this right you could do um, you could do two extrusions in plan view and extrude them up um, you could do one extrusion with a void um, if you start exploring it. Um, this is kind of one of those things where um, there's multiple ways to sort of skin a cat and rev it. You can see there's this little sh uh, door or drawer shelf um, uh, top piece. So um, I could do an extrusion in floor in, in elevation like I'm doing now. I could have done an extrusion in floor plan and cut it with a void. Uh, me personally, I like to avoid voids unless I absolutely need to uh, avoid voids. Um, so here I am just, just sketching now in elevation view. Um, so I'm in my interior elevation view and, uh, and I'm just kind of refining this and making it somewhat close uh, to the edges uh, that, that we have in the scan. Obviously I can just sort of pull this back and go around and you can see how quickly uh, uh, that scan lets you build things like this. Um, you know, these are, these are goofy little objects that really, you know, again, uh, other than other than being demolished and, and seeing in reference, uh, they, they don't really need to exist all that much. Um, but um, I don't have to spend a ton of time on them because just like that, I can model my existing kitchen. I have my scan, I have my kitchen, I can turn my scans off and there you go. Now we've got our reference piece, we've got our demo plans because uh, we can demo these existing objects and, uh, and we've got our kitchen ready to go. So there you have it. <laughs> in place model component kitchen so it seemed a little fast i did speed up some stuff in there because it was you know a, a pretty long you know watching me work could, could take a little while um and, and so i did want to speed up some of the repetitive tasks but i hope that shows you and, and gives you an idea of how you can use in place components first of all um how pretty much all i used was extrusions right there was no sweeps there was no voids um, there was no revolves right i mean i got all that done with an extrusion which is kind of cool. So hopefully that's kind of a, a neat lesson learned. The other thing really um, that, that, that stuck out in my mind um, um, watching my work back on this one is really how valuable having that scan there was. 
right? Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I can cut a section, 3D view, you name it, and, and, and the scan was there, the reference was there. You'll notice I was turning on and off certain scans because I had the higher detail, maybe like of a west elevation wall and the overall. And so you can kind of flip them on and off based on your view. But how fast you can quickly use those references of those images. And anyone who's done this before knows what it takes sometimes to have those four or five different sketches, the elevation hand sketches with the dimensions on them and going back and forth. You saw the curves, you saw the angles, right? this would have taken a lot longer. And so something as simple as putting in these silly cabinets, which again, are just going to get demoed, um, is something that didn't have to take a ton of time. And so now we've got our existing cabinets in, we've got our windows in, we've got our, our, our floor plan and our walls taking shape. In the next video, we're going to finally finish our existing conditions. We're going to be doing the exterior a little bit because there are some things that are important with the exterior, um, as well as the roof. Um, there's a little bit of an overhang and there's a there's a there's a, um, a gable sticking out, so that'll be kind of cool to see. And then there's a, a patio slash deck that's sort of off the off of it. Most of that is going to be for reference, whether it's for the renderings or for the plans to see them. Um, but I still want to make sure that they're accurate um, enough that you see what's there and they look good enough. So that's what we're going to do next. So uh, tune in for the next episode. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Leave a comment below if you like this. Of course, subscribe to the channel. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys soon.